Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Women Who Rock with Success, a digital media source for professional and entrepreneurial women. Did you know that we can be found on Google Play, Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, Sam's Broadcasting, Autocast, and more? Women Who Rock with Success airs live each Tuesday at 9 a.m. Central Time. Followed by our latest brand, Women Who Rock Investigate. We handpick professional women in many areas who can provide credible information in their fields to build your business and lifestyle. To learn more about us, just visit our website at www.womenwhorockwithsuccess.com. And good morning and welcome to Women Who Rock With Success. And thank everyone for tuning in with us on today. And today we will be talking about transforming your business through creative um, content. And this is very, very important when it uh, when you're trying to reinvent, you're trying to be more creative with your brand, you're trying to um, get more visibility, and also you're trying to attract more visitors to what it is that you have. Sometimes we have to transform some things. Sometimes we have to uh, uh, maneuver, navigate some things around in, uh, in order for our uh, product, our services, and our brands can be able to reflect our message. So today, uh, to be able to help us to uh, learn more about that is our speaker for today, and it's Joanna, and I cannot pronounce the last name, and I'm sorry, so I'm going to let you come in, and I'm going to let you introduce yourself to um, the platform, and you can be able to tell us a little bit more about you, okay? Uh, hello, Diane. Thank you so much for having me. And um, it's Joanna Pohorsky, and actually, I have to say, even though my na- last name causes a few challenges around the world, it has been a great uh, part of my brand and, and memorability, actually. Okay, okay, perfect. So so share a little bit more about you as, as far as your business industry as to what you do. Fantastic, I will. Uh, so um, I um, I have a very international background, and uh, I have um, started in the corporate world, uh, working with management consulting uh, company, and um, really learned how to run a business and run a successful business, looking at different business models and industries. And at the same time, I have always coached the team of the different uh, companies I've worked with. And uh, ultimately, I actually ended up running a global engineering um, business, a, a subset of, of a larger company uh, that had around 60 million turnover and 350 people. Uh, so so this, is, this is my background. And um, the more I understood and saw the, the corporate world and uh, the business side, um, the more I wanted to take that knowledge and help people to start up their own businesses and turn their ideas, um, their, uh, their passions in some cases as well, into a business that's viable, that's successful, and that's growing. Okay, okay, great, great. Okay, so the next question will be, uh, we um, like to share with the entrepreneurs as well as to what compels them in certain areas to be able to um, uh, begin this strategy of entrepreneurship and for business. So what um, inspired you to be able to help in this area for um, entrepreneurs, corporate America women, um, entrepreneurs that are CEOs? What inspired you to do this? Uh, so what I have seen in businesses is that uh, the more they grow, uh, the more different the ideas inside the businesses are about what is right for the business, both short and longer term. And um, the, the winning ideas and the prevalent ideas tend to be uh, those who are very often in the more senior ranks. And uh, when you are a more junior team member, sometimes they're the best of ideas and the best of suggestion might not be heard just because um, you're not senior enough, you haven't been long enough with the business beforehand, or just because what you actually want to do might not fit with the company strategy. That's, that's a very, very valid reason as well. So the company would not uh, even be able in some cases to support it. And um, what I have seen over time is that actually um, there are some fantastic ideas uh, and individuals uh, who really 
can turn those ideas into a fantastic company, very, very sustainable companies with great business models that not only solve a problem or challenge or fulfill a customer need, but also create work for others. So really create jobs and, and create innovation and really move the industry forward. And, and this is something that is absolutely fantastic. And this agility that someone needs to, to um, take a new business up and, and running and get it running, uh, very often you're just not able to find it in a larger company and a larger corporate. So, so my, uh, when I really started looking at my skill set and, and what's happening uh, mm -hmm. also outside the main corporate world, what I thought is that I could really start helping people to uh, turn their ideas into businesses, but also where they have businesses mm -hmm. that maybe grew out of a passion, turn them more into a profitable professional business. Because um, having a passion and having um, a, a fulfilling a need or, or solving a problem for someone does not actually mean that someone is able to run a business. This is quite a different skill set. And uh, not many people actually have both skill sets at the same um, level, that they are both creative and um, innovative enough to create that new business and, and create that prototype and, and uh, have proof of concept uh, that, that someone will actually buy so they can monetize it. But then building it up from there very often requires a quite a different skill set that might not at all be aligned. With the, with the passion that the individual who created the business in the first place has. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, that is awesome. That is awesome. So now we're going to get into uh, the next segment, and that's going to be the accountable mindset. <clears throat> and so when we uh, bring that to the table to entrepreneurs um, that are, are growing and trying to achieve, we know a lot of times individuals, um, coaches will set uh, small-term goals, and they will set long-term goals for entrepreneurs to be able to work towards and be able to build. But in this aspect, we're talking about accountability. And so we want you to be able to share with the audience as to what that means and what are some of the strategies that entrepreneurs can be able to use to be able to have accountability mindset. Uh, yes. Uh, and this is, this is such an important point because um, what, um, what, what you also mentioned is, is very important as a starting point because you can only be accountable for something that you have set or someone has set for yourself and it's a very clearly defined uh, goal or activity. So um, there is, first of all, um, the need to actually create what that uh, activity or goal is that you can be held uh, accountable against. And um, recurrently what I see is that, um, that um, starting at a really high level and then cascading down into day-to-day -day activities, people might, and some entrepreneurs, might not have a vision that's clear enough, that's visible enough. Um, it might be in their head, but not outside their head, which doesn't make it as clear as it needs to be. So it can be taken down into a business plan, which uh, sometimes is yet another challenge because, uh, again, entrepreneurs sometimes think um, that a business plan might be a 50, 100-page document and um, mm -hmm. consisting 90% out of numbers, cash flow, and P&L, when numbers are critical, that's not what at the, at the unique core of a business plan, sometimes one page with a very clear structure can already be mm -hmm. enough to be able to then look further down. What does it mean for my annual goals? What does it mean for my quarterly goals? What does it mean for my weekly goals and achievements that I have to put in place to achieve that longer term ambition, vision, strategy? And this is where accountability truly, truly starts coming in. Because someone who hasn't very clearly defined what they uh, need to achieve, want to achieve, will struggle to, to put accountability into place. And um, when, when we think just of what that means, putting accountability into place, um, several people uh, recently have told me that they're actually wary of accountability because of what it, it makes them think about is um, mm -hmm. more kind of military-style drill and once it's all or must it all and if you don't um, 
hit a certain target almost to the minute, then, you know, it all falls apart. And that's really not what accountability is at all about. Accountability mm-hmm. is something that's a mirror, and very often there is a reference to the accountability mirror, where you really have to look um, what you're aiming for and are you ready to achieve that goal. And if you are not, mm-hmm. you know, uh, then you have to ask for help. You have to look at ways of how to achieve that goal. And sometimes things happen, you know. So when you look, for example, at um, economic disruption that we've all experienced right now, this is a black mm-hmm. swan event. This is not something even in the best case scenario planning that many people can mm-hmm. foresee. So many mm-hmm. of the goals will have to be adjusted and for a good reason. But there's a huge difference between a, a valid reason and an excuse. And accountability really tries to help to eliminate the excuses. And where we say, you know, if I do it today, tomorrow, it doesn't matter. And, and um, it's so important for entrepreneurs to have this accountability and different types of accountability because, you know, in a corporate world, there is a boss, there is a colleague, you need to deliver something. If it doesn't happen, it's very visible. But as an entrepreneur, unless there's a client meeting, some things actually mm-hmm. can slip and the, the consequence of them might not become visible until a certain amount of time has passed and then they start accumulating. So um, mm-hmm. with, with accountability, there's different ways of preventing this from happening. And it starts with simple, things as simple as having an always updated calendar, whether it's a diary, a written diary, whether it's a calendar that you have an Outlook or any other tool. That's the very first starting point, actually knowing what needs to be done and when on the basis of what you're trying to achieve during the week, during the month, during the quarter. So this is where, again, this is, this is um, coming from reverse engineering down to building it up over time to achieve the goal. And uh, having accountability partners is a very effective way often when the goals align and the, the view as to what it means to be accountable aligns. Um, and, and great things can be achieved because in some cases an accountability partner can also help with support, with tips, and, and also help with mindset, not just with achieving the goals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely, because um, in, you know, every um, geographical area is different. So um, in, mm-hmm. in the U.S., um, uh, most of, of of bankers or financial institutions, they will not release a loan to uh, whether it's a, a, a corporations or whether it's a small business. A lot of them are looking for um, the business plan of what you had stated before. Mm-hmm. They're looking for a business plan. What are your goals? What are your accomplishments? accomplishments that you um, um, seek to achieve, whether it's small um, term or long term. And and so this is why it is important that when an individual has an idea and they want to create, they want to build it, they want to be able to pursue something that they have or they want um, to be able to convey their message as to what their, their business niche is, it's important uh, to be able to have mentors. It's important to be able to have coaches. It's also uh, important to network. And it's also important, as you stated, in regards to the business plan. The business plan is going to help the financial institution to be able to make a determination if this is a good fit for us. If she does not or he does not have the specific uh, um uh, components that we're looking for. We won't release the financial means that they are requesting. So I think that is very, very important that we hold ourselves accountable um, in in business and so we can be able to set effective goals. That is so awesome. So in regards to, let's go on a little bit further, we want to be able to talk about your brand <clears throat> Um, as well um, as to how you um, be able, you're able to help um, entrepreneurs to be able to su- pursue that. So share with us a little bit about some strategies. So, for example, if an entrepreneur wants to be able to connect with you and be able to access your um, your services, take us through a couple of steps that they would encounter when they connect with you. As a coach, yes, yes. 
so um, when I set out to provide support to business owners who want to grow their businesses, be clear about the goal, clarity of path, how they will achieve it, and also involve everyone around them because this very often is a challenge in achieving a goal and, and really underrated. Um, I wanted to, first of all, um, test proof of concept. And a very good way of doing this is actually a Facebook group because from a startup point of view, uh, as I looked at myself, uh, I wanted something that's easy to set up, so no technology overwhelm, um, really uh, cost effective and obviously it's a free, free way. And also I could already leverage the contacts I had. So at that point in time, I had close to 2,000 contacts on Facebook and from across uh, my, my last 15 years of life. So really a very diverse group of people. And uh, when I set up the group, I had a very clear view from a branding point of view. I, I really wanted to focus on a business accountability and mindset and how to support people, not in a very highbrow academic way, but really with the practical challenges. So very much in terms of um, what, what the community needed. And, um, and after, then oh, I, oh my, me or my virtual assistant, we then invited all my connections and um, this was the basis of the group where I had 200 people, so, so even over 200, uh, who, who joined and helped me then shape the content and still do until today where there are almost 450 of us. And that's a great starting mm -hmm. point if someone wants to, to really get some basic information, free support, connect with the community of, of other entrepreneurs from across the world because this is really important to me, diversity of thought, which comes from diversity of background. Um, so, so the Accountable Mindset Community Group is on Facebook, um, easily found for everyone. And um, what I also offer, um, I have clients where, uh, with who I support through one-to-one -one coaching. Uh, and, and this reaches from uh, anything from actually the business support to personal and life support. So the life coaching very often is actually quite critical to the business success as well uh, because we cannot disconnect. We cannot just connect the business from our personal life. Um, and sometimes, actually, we, we, we almost do because we focus on the business so much. But it's really, really important to bring everyone along and make them part of the success and the growth of the business so they don't feel left behind and maybe um, unwantingly even uh, put things in the way or make it more challenging to move forward. So, so that's really critical. And then finally, uh, I'm very excited because out of all the feedback I got, um, <laughs> I'm now able to offer, <laughs> uh, so I'm just generally so excited about helping people because my mission is to mm -hmm. help 100 people to achieve their number one goal this year. And, um, and um, I'm offering a course from the 25th of May, which will where I'll be able to reach more people and, and identify more of the number one goals that, that people have in their businesses uh, and maybe link them to their, their, their environment so their personal life and help them to achieve it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because um, as we <clears throat> already um, stated before, um, uh, 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 in regards to the business plan, in regards to growth, and I think a lot of times uh, when, you know, I know when I first got started several years ago, you know, I was all over the place. It was just like scrambled eggs. And so I had to start from the bottom, of course, and work with some strategies there, meeting different people. You know, a lot of times everything is not going to come to us through uh, social media platforms. Sometimes we have to interact with individuals in our local um, uh, paradigm, and then we have to get affiliated and acclimated, and then after that we learn and we connect and we begin to build, and then after that we will need someone to be able to help us, whether it's signing up through a newsletter or a subscription or we're, we're out hiring the coaches that we uh, perhaps maybe need in order for us to maintain a stability, and that's very, very important to make sure that our um, our brand and our products and services are not all over the place because a lot of times people will get our messages confused um, as to what we're doing. Um, and I know I went through some um, some issues with that some years ago when I first got started, and 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 my mindset was on this particular um, 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 niche, and then but the website was saying something totally different, and so I think it is very very important that we connect with individuals so we can have a game plan as to where we're going and how we're going to be able to succeed with that. So when we're transforming jo uh, Joanna. 
<clears throat> when we're transforming to growth, you know, in marketing, we have different types of levels. Um, uh, when we're growing, we have the early stages. Then we have the mature mm-hmm. stages uh, when we're growing um in business and what have you. So when we're transforming, what are some of the things that we need to first think about? You know, and I know you gave us some strategies as to uh, what uh, we can be able to do um, um, as to, you know, having a coach and what have you, but transform. And a lot of times we get confused with that word. And, 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 that, and when we transform, we're looking for something to, for something new in order to, be able to enhance. So when you're transforming um, your your clients, that's a better word, when you're transforming your clients, um, what type of investments would you um, would like to achieve with them? What type of investments that you, like takeaways with your clients when you're trying to get them to transform to something different. As I stated to you before, you know, I was all over the place. So I had to have someone to help me to be able to get another strategy in there in order for people to be able to see my message. Yes. So um, you brought up so many great points. I just think you where to start. Um, so first of all, <laughs> thank you very much for bringing up <laughs> um, the, the, um, the four stages of, of growing a business because um, – this is actually something that uh, where, where this is the reason uh, where, where people don't adapt to the different stages, uh, which results in more than half of startups failing in the first uh, three years of their existence. Um, and this mm-hmm. is because when you move from being a founder, running a startup, where you maybe have, like myself, a, a VA, to then um, starting to grow your reach and the number of people you work with, as I am starting doing now, you have to mm-hmm. standardize, optimize to be able to outsource and delegate. And mm-hmm. if you are not prepared to let go, and this is a huge, huge emotional barrier for many, for many business owners. If you're not prepared to mm-hmm. let go and trust people to support your business and run your business with you in different ways, you will not be able to move from, from the first stage of the startup to the growth stage. And, uh, and then of course, um, moving to maturity and then pivoting later on, much later on, uh, same principles apply. You have to adapt, you have to adjust, but the bigger you become as a business, the more you have to understand how you move from being a doer in control of every detail to being a leader and putting systems and processes in place where you can actually see whether the trust you've given people and what is delegated is really working as well as, as it was um, meant to do. And, uh, and also with, with content, I thought it was really interesting what you've mentioned. Because when, when you start, very often you prepare the content yourself. And when you start up, you might have some content maybe from your professional previous life or career. But chances are that a lot of what you share as you build your brand will be actually a first. So, you know, the first article, the first blog, the first ad ad you you put out on Facebook or somewhere else, the first video. And initially, Mm -hmm. actually, even finding the people who can help you um, make this all look professional and and pull it all together. Uh, You know, there's there's always some online challenges, you know, whether it's um, uh, whether it's it's a tool or a system, even Zoom, you know, um, or or StreamYard, anything like this is not always that straightforward. So, so it takes mm-hmm. actually a lot of time initially, the front end loading uh, from, um, from when you start, where once you have people you can trust and certain processes, it becomes easier also. And this is so critical. I've, I've experienced this myself. The power of repurposing content is absolutely magnificent. Once you have content, you can really adapt it and adjust it. And of course, you can bring people in who help you maybe, you know, one hour a week, maybe one hour a day, whatever it is, but do just that. Mm -hmm. So straight away, instead of maybe spending one day on creating content for the next week, it really, uh, you're outsourcing maybe a couple of hours to someone else and, and, and focus on something. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So uh, now in your bio, it, it states uh, 
you know, that uh, you help business owners and professionals to complete clarity in six weeks. Let the audience know how important it is. You know, sometimes yeah. individuals, they don't remain committed. They don't re- remain committed. As soon as they get the first three or four, well, the first two weeks of all, or, or some of it, I'll say not all, because if they're getting all of it, it would not take six weeks for them to be able to get the full clarity that you have to offer in order to transform their uh, their content. So let the audience know how important it is for them not to just, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna uh, go with Joanna, and so now since I'm with Joanna, uh, I've, given, I've learned enough in, in three days, <laughs> and so they, t- they pack up and they move away because they have not, you know, they feel that they have all what they need. So um, share with the audience also the importance of staying committed to the full uh, trial basis of um, having a coach with them. Yes, and um, again, you mentioned a few things which are just so critical to success when you look at, you know, what makes successful people successful. Uh, The clarity, Mm -hmm. the commitment, uh, and the, the persistence. These are really three critical things for anyone who wants to achieve um, a success, a goal, whether it's in business or professionally. Uh, because first of all, uh, we constantly bombarded by lots of information, whether it's social media, our family and friends, our work, our business. And uh, mm-hmm. br- our brains are very good at filtering them out. However, we still get distracted. So if we are not okay. clear about the one thing that we're pursuing, this one goal, which might be the goal of the week um, or the goal of the year, depending on which time frame we look at, we are going to get distracted and lose momentum. So uh, the starting point is always being very clear about why someone does something. Why have I set up the business? Um, why am I trying to, to double the revenue? Why uh, mm-hmm. do, am I trying to, to get into a better mindset? Why am I trying to get this promotion? Because the reason why really helps when times get more challenging and more tough. It's a very positive, mm-hmm. so, so motivation, there are two types of motivation. There's the positive motivation, the towards motivation where we want to achieve something. And then there's the second type of motivation, which is the avoidance of, of a problem of an issue and, and steering away to avoid a problem from happening. And using understanding how motivation works for you and which one is the stronger one for you helps you really to set the vision and the reason why. And we currently use it as well. You know, think about what will happen if I don't focus, if I don't achieve it, what impact is it going to have on my family, on myself, on our future, on our our, Mm -hmm. um, lifestyle. This is really, really important. So within six weeks, there is an element of um, self-study, um, which is just uh, the theory and a, a bit of homework and preparation. And then there is a lot of time once a week with myself uh, where I answer all the questions, support everyone with the planning, with the goal setting, with the accountability, with also making sure that the environment is supportive, supporting them and the goal, because everyone is going to benefit from it in the end. Mm-hmm. Great, great, absolutely. So um, we have enjoyed um, all of the content that you have shared with us, which was very, very uh, transformational. And we discussed a lot of components today as what you had shared with the listeners as to how to transform their business, how to have creative content, how to uh, be accountable, have accountable mindset. We have to be uh, held accountable ourselves as business owners, coaches, entrepreneurs, uh, creative uh, uh, millenniums. We have to be uh, accountable ourselves, and we appreciate everything from you today, um, Joanna. So with that being said, share with the listeners and the audience how they can be able to connect with you, uh, find uh, you on any social media platforms, and you can be able to share your website at this time with the audience. So at this point in time, I actually don't have a website yet because uh, in the past I had some challenges, so very, staying very focused. Um, I would invite everyone into the group, the Accounts of a Mindset community on Facebook, or to contact me directly Mm -hmm. at joanna at theaccountofamindset.com. 
Okay, great. So thank you once again for being our guest on today. Hopefully that the entrepreneurs will thrive and energetic, uh, energized um, to be able to create something and transform their business and hope they can be, be able to net, network with you um, in the near future. So thank you for everything, all of the tools and resources that you provided for us on today. And so for the listeners, you can go to our website at www dot women who rock with success dot com and also you can be able to follow us on the latest guests and um, entrepreneurs that will be on the podcast on our Facebook page. Until next time, everyone have a great day. Thank you so much, Diane.